Hello everyone, my name is Wintel Jung, and I am in Mr. Dutton's first and second period AP Chemistry class. Today I will be doing question 16.90 from the old chemistry book, specifically the 8th edition because I turned in my textbook early. Now, question 16.90 asks us to identify the Lewis acid and Lewis base in each of the following reactions shown here. But before we can answer this question, we have to know what Lewis acids and bases are. Gilbert and Lewis came up with this new method of looking at reactions between hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Now, unlike the Aronis or bronsted layering methods, the Lewis, me uh, Lewis model looks at electron exchange during the reactions. The modern day definition of a Lewis acid, according to the IUPAC, is a chemical species that is able to accept electron pairs. This definition is much broader than the definition Lewis provided during his career since the Lewis acids and bases no longer need to be hydrogen or hydroxide ions, respectively. Thus, to clarify, Lewis acids are simply electron pair acceptors, and Lewis bases are electron pair donors. Also, just as a side note, in order to identify Lewis acid and bases, you must be able to draw Lewis structures, because you must visually identify the acid and base species in certain cases. So, if, need to go, if you need to go back to chapters 8 and 9 and brush up, do so. Now that, you have, now that you know the definition of a Lewis acid and a Lewis base, and have the prerequisite skills, let's go tackle problem number one from question 16.90. So first thing we have to do is we have to draw the Lewis structure for each uh, one of these four chemical, uh, chemical species. The first one, as many of you guys will know, is nitrous acid. The second one, of course, is a hydroxide ion. This is a nitrite ion, N-I-T-R-I-T-E ion. And if you don't know what this is, you may as well drop out of AP Chemistry right now. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's water. Great, so now we draw the Lewis structures. For nitrous acid, the Lewis structure looks like this. Each of these two dots, or each of these dots represent an electron pair. So this is two electron pairs right here. Next, we draw the hydroxide ion. But wait, it's an ion, which has a which and it carries a one minus one charge. Thus, we need to put a bracket around it and write minus one on there. This is in equilibrium with the nitrite ion and water. So now we draw the nitrite ion. And it's also an ion, so we need to put a 1 minus charge around it. Next, we draw water. Now, water is very simple. It's oxygen with two lone pairs attached to two hydrogens. Great. So now we, of course, separate this to simplify the equilibrium. Reactants, products. Now the nitride ion displays uh, resonance, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to go with this structure. Now, as, we, as you can see, the hydrogen ion from the nitrous acid detached from the nitrous acid and, ex and, is a, and accepted one of the electron pairs from the hydroxide ion. This means the uh, nitrous acid was the electron pair acceptor, or the Lewis acid, while the hydroxide ion was the electron pair donor, and thus the Lewis base. As you can see here, the hydrogen from the nitrous acid attached itself to one of the lone pairs on the hydroxide ion, thus forming water. It created a bond with the electron pairs. And so nitrous acid was the, uh, was the species that accepted the, um, the electron pair, and thus the Lewis acid, and um, the hydroxide ion is the Lewis base. Great. So now we're done with one problem, let's knock out the next problem using the same procedure.
Problem number two. We have here, uh, we have iron 3 bromide. Uh, cor more cordially known as ferric bromide, if you will. Next, we have the bromine ion. Or you can call it uh, bromide. As in, bro, mind if I join. Next, we have iron 4 bromide ion. The iron 4 bromide ion. Great. So we did the exact same thing, and we draw Lewis structures right now. For iron 3 bromide, we have iron in the middle with Br. Next, we have the bromine ion. We draw its electrons in, and we put a 1 minus charge next to it. We draw our arrow to simplify reactants and products. And we have F, E, B, R, B, R, B, R, and another set of Br. This, of course, carries a 1 minus charge. As you can see, the bromide donated a pair of electrons from its non-bonding electron to the iron 3 bromide to form the iron 4 bromide ion. Since the bromide ion donated uh, a pair of electrons, it is the Lewis, at, it is the Lewis base. Excuse me. Meanwhile, the iron 3 bromide accepted a pair of electrons, thus making it the Lewis acid. As you can see here, one of these lone pairs, suppose these, uh, these lone uh, non-bonding electrons, latched itself onto the Fe. This is a donor, and this is the acceptor, which is why, F, which is why iron 3 bromide is the Lewis acid, and, iron, and the bromine ion is the Lewis base. That wasn't too hard. Let's move on to the third problem. So what we have here is the zinc, zinc ion. aqueous, and four ammonias, also aqueous, we draw the little arrow, and here we have a complex ion, this is the tetraamine, amine, zinc ion. So let's draw the uh, Lewis, or this problem is interesting, sorry, uh, before we begin. This problem is interesting because uh, by the, because by the uh, uh, bronsted lori definition, this is actually not an acid-based reaction since there are no hy uh, uh, hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions uh, involved. Thus, Lewis acid and, uh, or sorry, thus Lewis acid and base theory allows us to explain the formation of these uh, complex ions and other species which do not contain hydrogen or hydroxide ions. So, the, uh, the zinc ion is very straightforward. It's this. The ammonium, uh, the ammonia molecule looks like this. You should be familiar with lone pairs at the top. And let me extend my arrow. And what we have here is a complex ion, NH3, 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 and NH3. Now I'm going to put 2 plus um, here because it's a zinc charge, although it really could be any charge. 2 plus, 4 plus, 6 plus, whatever. That doesn't really matter. Now, let's look at this. The zinc ion accepted the lone pair from the ammonia. Since it's the electron pair acceptor, zinc is the Lewis acid. Since ammonia donated its pair of electrons, it is the Lewis base. Simple, right? Now, moving on to our final problem. We're almost done, guys. What we have here is sulfur dioxide.
as a gas, plus H2O, water, as a liquid, is in equilibrium with sulfurous acid. As you environmental scientists may know, this is how some acid rain is formed. Um, instead of carbon dioxide, you have sulfur dioxide, but that's not really important for the purpose of this video. So we draw the Lewis structure for sulfur dioxide. It's sulfur with a double bond with one oxygen and a single bond with another oxygen. Sulfur has two, uh, one lone pair. This oxygen has two lone pairs and this one has three. Now, once again, this uh, sulfur dioxide displays resonance, but for the purpose of this video, that's not very important. Next, we draw water, O, with two lone pairs, attached to 2H. Draw the arrow, and sulfurous acid, which is sulfur with 1OH. I'm just going to write that as um, one thing. Sulfur has, uh, I believe, two um, electron or lone pair, one lone pair underneath, and this is the other. And I believe here there are there is one oxygen with two lone pairs. Now, let's take a look at this. The lone pair uh, of electron from the water attacks the sulfur and creates a third a third OS bond. This makes the water the Lewis space since it donated a lone pair of electrons and it makes the H and it makes the um, oh so, uh, yeah this makes it the Lewis space and it makes the uh, sulfur dioxide the Lewis acid. And so there we go. This is a very simple question, although I have to uh, point you out to one thing, and that is uh, water is amphoteric, so it can be sometimes a Lewis base and a Lewis acid at the same time, depending on the reaction. So pay special attention to uh, amphoteric substances. But um, other than that, we're all done. So thank you for watching, guys. This is Wintow Jung, first and second period AP chemistry class, um, and thank you for watching.